Are you coming to Bonaire to shore dive? Would you like to know 10 things you can do to make your Bonaire shore diving experience easier and more enjoyable? Well, that's what we're talking about in this video and we're doing it right now. Hey folks, Kevin here with the 10 things you can do to make your Bonaire shore diving experience easier and more enjoyable. If you're new to our channel, my wife Liz and I provide travel destination tips, tricks, advice and reviews all geared towards making your trip easier and more enjoyable. We'd love to have you join our community and invite you to subscribe to our channel by clicking that subscribe button. Then make sure you hit the notification bell so you'll be made aware when we have new content for you to enjoy. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and leave us a comment. We'd love to know what you found most helpful. But for now, let's dive right into those 10 things you can do to make your Bonaire shore diving experience easier and more enjoyable. Bonaire is the number one shore diving destination in the Caribbean for a reason. It's awesome. Beautiful water, beautiful reef and abundant marine life, all easily accessible from shore. But Bonaire shore diving is probably a bit different than diving your local beaches, lakes or quarries. It's even different than other Caribbean shore dive locations like Cayman Brock, St. Croix, or Curacao. It's different for two main reasons. One, 80 to 90% of the dive sites are isolated and that they're not near a town or services you may need. Emergency services, automotive services like a tow truck, a phone. You have to be self-sufficient and self-reliant. Number two, and the main thing that's different about Bonaire compared to other shore diving destinations is the terrain. You won't be entering the water from a sandy beach or a boat ramp. There won't be a ladder or a nice stairs down into the water. The coast of Bonaire is rugged. It's jagged iron shore. It's coral rubble that shifts under your feet. It's slimy, slippery, hard packed, and that's just getting to the water. Once there, you may have to step down onto unknown ground. There are ankle twisting holes combined with an ever changing bottom hidden coral heads and rocks that move with the surf. Pretty much everything between your rental truck and you floating in the water is designed to make you slip and fall and have your dive buddies laugh at you while you try to stand back up with 100 pounds of gear on your back. I don't say this to discourage you, shore diving Bonaire is awesome. It's total dive freedom. Dive where you want, when you want. Thousands of people shore dive Bonaire every year. But why not make it as easy and as comfortable as possible? This list will do just that. These are 10 things you can do or bring to Bonaire that will make your shore diving experience easier and more enjoyable. And make sure you stick with me until the end of the video because I have a bonus tip that you're going to love. So let's get started with our list with number one. Watch our videos. We've created informational videos on several Bonaire dive sites. In these videos, we cover everything you need to know to have a successful Bonaire shore dive. You'll get an overview of the site outside of the water, things like the best place to park and how to find the entry, You'll learn the best place to enter and exit the water, and Liz will actually give you a demonstration. We provide some navigational tips and a lot of other fun information. These videos are a great way to prepare for your trip and let you know exactly what to expect when you arrive at the dive site. You'll find links for the videos below. We have a few available now and are in the process of editing more, which is another great reason for you to subscribe to the channel and request notifications so you'll be the first to know when we upload videos for new dive sites. And if you don't see the video for the dive site you want to see, let us know in the comments. We'll be back to Bonaire soon and we'll add your site to the list. Number two. Get a Bonaire dive site guidebook. As helpful as our dive site videos may be, we don't yet have them for every dive site. Plus, you may not have access to YouTube prior to every dive. A good guidebook can be invaluable as you prepare for your Bonaire shore dives. There are two that I recommend. First is Bonaire Shore Diving Made Easy by Susan Porter. This has been my go-to book for years. I purchased this book prior to my first trip to Bonaire and have purchased subsequent editions as they've been published over the years. It is concise and to the point, detailing the entry and exit spots for each dive site, as well as descriptions of the underwater terrain and the types of marine life you can expect to see. You'll also find maps indicating the location of several unmarked sites. The book is small and light, so it's easy to pack and carry around with you on Bonaire. In fact, one of the first things I do when I get to Bonaire is put this in the glove compartment of my rental vehicle. It's also great for keeping notes about the dive sites. I'll make notes about uh, navigational landmarks, compass headings, um, lots of other things. It really has become a valuable piece of my Bonaire dive kit. 
The other guide I recommend is the ReSmart Guide for Bonaire. This is a newer guide, first published in 2018. Similar to the Susan Porter book, it has descriptions of the dive site entry and exit points as well as the underwater terrain, but it also has overhead pictures of most of the sites as well as underwater maps including suggested navigational routes. The maps are nice but not really something that translates well once you're underwater in my opinion, but they can still give you a good idea of what to expect on the dive. Now, in addition to dive site information, there's a great marine life identification section. It's really good. The ReSmart Guide also includes general island information like emergency contact numbers, dive shop listings, park and beach listings, etc. There's a lot of information in this book. All in all, this book really has grown on me, and I think it's a great choice for the first time visitor to Bonaire. I put links to purchase these guides in the video description below. You can also purchase on island, but you may have to try several dive shops to find them. Your best bet is to purchase prior to the trip so you can use them for planning purposes. These are both great guides, and I recommend that you have at least one, if not both of them with you to reference prior to every dive. Number three. Use a walking stick. Hear me now, believe me later, this tip will change your Bonaire shore diving life forever. Get a walking stick. I think the official term is a trekking pole, a telescoping trekking pole to be exact. I just call it a stick. Get a stick, use a stick. Use it on every dive. Use it to help balance yourself on uneven terrain. Use it to aid in walking on the shifting, sliding core rubble. Use it to help step down into the water. Use it to probe for obstructions and holes in the rolling surf. Using a stick can take your fall numbers down to zero when you're on Bon Air. Oh, and get a cheap one, the saltwater tears these things up. You can typically buy a pair for $15 to $20. Links below. Now you don't want to have to hold that stick for the entire dive, so you'll need to attach it to your tank. Here's an easy solution. Get bungee material or latex tubing and make rings to slide over your tank. Once you're floating in the water, have your dive buddy put the stick through the rings on the tank and you'll be good to go. When the dive is over, just repeat the process. You can typically find the bungee material and latex tubing at a home improvement store, but I've also put links to purchase in the description below. Number four. Use thick soled dive boots. Because of the rugged shore on Bonaire, you're going to need dive boots with a thick supportive sole. The basic dive boots you purchase for your open water class or thick neoprene socks are great for boat diving, but they just won't do the trick for Bonaire shore diving. This is another hear me now, believe me later tip. Your feet, ankles, and knees will thank you. Here are two boots perfectly suited for Bonaire shore diving. First is the fourth element, Amphibian. This is the boot I dive and I absolutely love it. It's great for Bonaire shore diving. You'll see it's got a really thick sole, nice and rugged, great boot. I love these things. Took me several years to stumble upon them uh, and find the perfect boot for Bonaire. And for me, this is it. It's a great boot. Um, one thing or a couple things to keep in mind, it's a much higher profile than your normal boot, so it might not fit in every fin pocket. So give that some thought. You may want to try them out before your trip. The other thing is it's thick neoprene. It's about six and a half millimeter, which is nice and warm, but a little thicker than your typical five mil boot. Just something to keep in mind. All in all, it's a phenomenal boot. Does the perfect job for Bonaire. Next is the Tusa Imprex. This is a great boot. This is what Liz dives. It's a phenomenal boot, much lower profile than the Amphibian, so it'll fit in any fin pocket. It's five mil, so it's probably what you're used to diving. But don't let that low profile fool you. It looks like a thin sole, doesn't it? But it's not. This is really sturdy. It's nice and hard, perfectly suited for binary shore diving. Um, it's a great boot. I tell you when it's time to replace my Amphibians, I'm gonna have a tough time not going with this one instead. So we'll see when that happens. There are links to both of these in the description. Uh, they're great boots, check them out. Now, if I'm talking dive boots, I'm talking open heel fins. If you're adamant about using your full foot fins with bare feet, you're going to need a pair of thick soled water shoes for getting in and out of and to and from the water. Something like these, something with a nice thick sole. Um, you also need a way to attach them to your BC for the duration of the dive. Your best bet though is just to use open heel fins. And believe me, you don't want to barefoot these dive sites. I've seen divers and snorkelers try, they're miserable and it takes them forever to get in and out of the water. It's fun for me to watch, but um, it's miserable for them. Number five. Get spring straps for your fins. Spring straps for your fins. 
Nothing makes donning and doffing your fins easier than using spring straps. There's a good chance you may already have these. I know fins, uh, many of them come standard with them today, some don't. Um, so I highly recommend you look at getting some of these for your fins. Snap right in, they make donning and doffing one nice easy pull. Uh, nothing's easier than when you're in the water and you've got your hands full with other gear than to being able to put your fins on with one easy motion. Super simple. Um, they make universal fins for many different type fins. Uh, these are actually Tusa spring straps I use in my Scuba Pro fin. So I find that I like these better than the ones that came with the fin. So once again, highly recommend you get some spring straps. Number six. Bring a fin keeper. Let's keep talking about fins and get yourself a fin keeper. This is a super simple little gadget, very inexpensive, that'll help you attach your fins to your BC. Think about this, you're walking from your truck into the water. You've got your walking stick, you've got your camera, maybe some other gear. The last thing you want to do is fool with your fins. Or maybe it's one of those entries on Bonaire where you have to climb down primitive steps onto the shoreline. The last thing you want to do is worry about your fins. This is very simple. Goes through the straps of your fin, clip them to your BC, walk right in. Put your fins on, after the dive, same thing. Clip them to your BC. Very simple little gadget, makes diving much easier and more comfortable on Bon Air. Fin Keeper. Number seven. Use your compass. Recognize this? It's your compass. I bet you've got one attached to your console right next to your pressure gauge. Or maybe you've got one in the closet somewhere. You put it there many years ago. Let's face it, we don't always use compasses on every dive. Maybe it's a group dive or it's a guided dive. Maybe it's a shipwreck and you're just following the wreck. On Bon Air, when you shore dive, you're gonna wanna have and use your compass. Now, navigating Bon Air dive sites is very easy. You dive south, then come back north, or you dive north, then come back south. But where you're going to find your compass very helpful is finding your exit point which happened to be your entry point on most dives. Super simple. It's easy on Bonaire. If you miss your entry point on most dive sites, it's, it's not a big deal coming back out, but it's nice to be able to swim back exactly to where you got in the water. Some dive sites like Tolo, Carpata, um, others, Jeff Davis, for example, it's really good to come back exactly where you got in uh, and your compass will help you do that. Super simple, before you descend underwater, turn back to shore, Take a compass heading, get underwater, find a landmark. When you swim back after the, your dive is over, you find that landmark, then follow that compass heading back into shore. Now you can always go for it. You can always pop your head up and see where you are. But once you drop back down underwater to swim to shore, you're still gonna need your compass. No shame in gophering. But I recommend, highly recommend, that you swim back to your entry point underwater. There's so much to see in the shallows and bond air, uh, even in, just five to 10 feet of water. Um, even super close to shore, you're gonna find some interesting things to look at. And if you got your compass, you can swim straight back to where you just need to stand up and get out of the water. So find this guy, use it, and enjoy your dives. Number eight. Get a dry box. One of the things you've probably learned about Bon Air is don't leave anything in your vehicle but there's some things you really need to have with you every day. Some cash, a credit card, your driver's license, maybe you have prescription eyewear, some things that you don't want to get stolen, so you need to take them with you on the dive. So what do you do? Get a draw box. This simple, small draw box has served me well for many years. It's the perfect size to carry just a little bit of cash, my driver's license, and a credit card. Gonna need that cash if you're eating at Makey Snack, best place for lunch on the island. But, super simple, clip it to your BC, put it in a pocket, whatever works best for you. Great little draw box, works very well. Of course, there's a link in the description below to this draw box. But maybe you have things that won't fit in a small draw box like this. Maybe you need more space. So what do you do? You could certainly buy a larger draw box, but oftentimes the larger the draw box, the more expensive it is, and oftentimes they're not depth rated to the depths we need and you're still gonna worry about whether or not your thing's gonna stay dry and stay safe. I've got a solution for you though. You probably have one of these laying around, don't you? I bet you're even taking it on your trip to do some night dives. Well, take the batteries out of it and you've got yourself a large draw box. 
I use this sometimes so I can carry my extra GoPro that I use for landscape uh, filming. A pair of glasses. I keep my extra batteries in there. Uh, it really does work well for larger items that you want to keep secure and take with you on the dive. So don't feel like you've got to buy an extra dive box or a dry box. Just use a dive light. Number nine. Bring spare O-rings. Every course you've ever had in scuba tells you to have a good save-a-dive kit and they mention to take extra O-rings. But how often do you really do that? If you're using a dive operator or you're on their boat or they brought the tanks for you, they typically have extra O-rings. But on Bonaire, you need to have O-rings for yourself. And it's not a matter of if, but when you're gonna blow an O-ring. Most likely it's gonna be midweek. Um, you and your buddies will have loaded up the truck with 10 to 12 tanks. Uh, you're getting ready to start your third dive. You're well south or well north and you get that hiss. And you know you've blown an O-ring. And you can always use one from a spent tank, right? But what if it rips when you get it out? You can always drive back to town, get a new tank, drive back down to your dive site, but there again, you've wasted about an hour doing that. So why not just get a little kit like this that has a lot of O-rings in it? This simple little scuba tank has an O-ring removal tool and O-rings right in there so you can save your dive. Super simple tip, super simple thing you can purchase prior to your trip that's very inexpensive. Get one of these, stick it in your glove compartment, and have peace of mind for a week. I've got a link in the description uh, for this little kit here, so no reason not to have one. Number 10. Get a flat tire inflator adapter thingy. The only thing worse than blowing an O-ring when you're short diving by an air is blowing a tire. Let me tell you, the last thing you want is to be well north or well south or really anywhere on Bon Air and have a flat tire. There's no AAA to speak of. You're probably not gonna have your phone with you to call for help. Even if you could get in touch with your rental company, it's gonna take them a long time to get to you and get that tire changed. And let me tell you, your rental truck's not gonna have a spare tire. I can guarantee you that. They're typically removed or stolen at some point in time. So what do you do when you get a flat tire? Keep one of these with you and inflate it yourself. This simple little tool plugs into the inflator hose of your regulator and then you can just inflate the tire yourself. Super simple, it's not a permanent fix, but let's face it, if you're up in Washington Park or you're north of Bopec or you're at any dive site on the island, this will get you to the service station to get that tire fixed. You might have to stop two or three times to fill it up repeatedly, but it's sure better than having to wait on someone to come find you or help you and get you home. You get one of these, stick it in your yellow compartment at the beginning of the week, and it's there when you need it. One other thing, if you're like me and you use an Air 2 uh, for your secondary air source, uh, you're gonna need an adapter for your adapter to sort of work with your Air 2. I've got links to both of these in the description below. No reason not to get one of these very inexpensive. Once again, throw them in the glove compartment of your truck when you first arrive and you'll have peace of mind the entire week. Well folks, if you've kept count, that's 10 things, but remember I promised you a bonus item. Bonus tip. And this is a gadget I learned about recently. It's not necessarily dive specific or bon air shore diving specific, but I just thought it was really unique, very simple, very helpful, and something you can use not only on bon air, but other travel destinations, even at home. And that's this. This is the Hero Clip. I know it looks like a simple carabiner, and it is, but it's a carabiner with a twist, literally. Look at this. It's a carabiner. Now it's a carabiner with a hook. Pretty simple thing. Why couldn't I have thought of this, right? But when I think about diving, where could this be useful on a trip? Maybe as a place to hang your BC, right? Hang this somewhere. Not the, the best BC hanger, but in the pinch it'll work. Maybe you're having lunch at Beach Hut and your wife or girlfriend doesn't want to have their purse laying in the sand. Hang this on the table and put it here. The, the uses really are endless. You can think of plenty of ways to use this when you need a hook and a clip on the end, uh, traveling or at home. Super simple thing. I learned about this. I was watching a, a YouTube video on travel hacks. I saw it, ordered it immediately, thought it was really neat, and just figured I would add it to this video because I did not know when I would have a chance to put it in another video. So the Hero Clip, this is the medium. Also comes in a small size. I got this for Liz for when she travels for work. She travels a lot. 
Uh, there's also a micro, which is smaller than this, I assume. I've not seen it. But once again, the Hero Clip, I've got a link in the description below where you can purchase these. Uh, pretty awesome little thing. Once again, it's the Hero Clip. Well, folks, that's it. Those are 10 things you can do to make your Bonaire shore diving experience easier and more enjoyable. Did you like the video? Give it a thumbs up. Let us know in the comments what you found most helpful. What advice do you have for your fellow Bonaire shore divers? Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you at the next dive site.